so beautiful, glorious, wonderful even. I love the outdoors. There's just something really wonderful about being out here in the open, feeling the breeze on your face, looking at the sky, clouds. Everything's just, it's beautiful. So beautiful. So beautiful. So beautiful. So freaking beautiful, man. Oh! <laughs> hey. All right, all right, listen. I like the outdoors a lot, but it's not really my thing. You know, video games are kind of what I've always played since I was little till now. And so when I think about beautiful worlds, or beautiful anything really, the outdoors isn't my first go-to place. I like the worlds of video games, they're so imaginative, there's so much you can do in a video game. And honestly when I think about beautiful worlds in video games, one I go to more than any is the World of Warcraft. Oh wow, how you impress me even more every time I boot you up. Its beauty knows no ends. Unless you're still at this, that place is ugly. I know, I know. WoW doesn't have the most high-tech graphics. But I actually love the more cartoonish look that WoW presents. And I find that it allows Blizz to be more creative than your traditional high-budget graphics would easily allow. And in all fairness to WoW, it has improved greatly over the years in its graphics department. I love the different worlds and zones WoW lets me explore, the wonderful palettes of colors, and the ear twangy music that is arguably some of the best in video game history. You know what? I can't hold back. I'm doing my top 10 most beautiful zones in World of Warcraft. Know that this is my specific opinion and that even though our opinions may differ, it doesn't mean I'm saying your opinion is wrong. I'd love to know what you think of the most beautiful zones as well, so definitely drop that in the comments below. I'd love to read and respond to anyone that has anything to say. Hey, let's get this ball rolling with number 10. Starting my list off at number 10 is Zanger Marsh. Zanger Marsh is one of those zones that gets easily skipped over on these sort of lists. And that's a real shame considering just how wonderful the design is here. I know, I know, it's blue. Like, a lot. And it's rainy. A lot. And there's a lot of giant mushrooms. Everywhere. A lot? but I still don't see how that's necessarily a bad thing. I find the mushrooms to be charming, especially if I plop my big belf butt down on one to enjoy the atmosphere. And speaking of atmosphere, the music, rain, and blue color scheme relax me to no limit. I feel the sudden stress when roaming through Hellfire Peninsula and arriving in Zanger Marsh, it's just kind of taken away like a breath of fresh fungal air. The music's very primal sounding, but at the same time, like I said, very relaxing. And the rain just, it kills me. It does it. I'm just, I'm out. I love how slow everything seems here too. Everything moves kind of like at a snail's pace. It really helps to cement the whole R&R &R thing. I also love the wildlife too. From the beautiful majestic fin striders to the vibrant colorful fireflies, all living in this charming aquatic ecosystem. Even with the Naga sucking up all the water, I find their base of Serpent Shrine to be the ultimate cherry on this delightful Sunday. Seeing its beautiful blue beacon swirl into the sky is freaking wonderful. I don't have a specific spot I enjoy more than others in Zanger. Instead, I find myself lodging on one of these mushrooms, enjoying the wonderful scenery that the marsh has to give me. Coming 
in at number 9 is Howling Fjord. This actually kills me a little bit to put the fjord so low on the list. It's easily one of my favorite zones. And while it didn't score my top 5, it doesn't change the fact that I find it extremely beautiful. I know, I know, a lot of people looking at the zone would probably be like, Eh, it's okay, but I've seen better. But that doesn't do it for me. I'm madly in love with Scandinavian culture, and Howling Fjord does its best to bring that culture and landmass design to video games. From the gigantic, wonderful fjord cliffs you see the minute you enter the zone to its misty forests, the fjord offers a lot of wild yet very majestic scenery. The Viacro buildings and settlements help to add a little bit of spice to this charming zone, but not too much is lost in the wild department. Shovel Tusk, easily one of my favorite Warcraft animals, move together in huge packs, fighting for dominance, while Prototrix soar through certain parts of the sky. It's a real wonderful sight. Then of course, there's the Aurora Borealis, lighting up the sky and making it feel like you just arrived in Norway. At least that's what I feel. Of course, I haven't even brought up Howling Fjord's music yet, which is my favorite Warcraft official track to this date. A beautiful Nordic melody plays, simple and slightly sorrow-filled, but nonetheless a majesty of notes that caress your ears. Like, jeez, Blizzard, my eyes are already going insane. Now my ears too? You're gonna kill me here. My favorite spot in the fjord has to be the fjords overlooking Utgard Keep. It's a great mixture of the Nordic Viacro buildings and the beautiful flowing water that surrounds the area. Howling Fjord is easily an overlooked zone, but if you look hard enough, there's gold in them there fjords. Taking my number 8 spot is Vasture. I need everyone to understand something very important about me and Vasture. I... I'm afraid of sharks. I know, I know, kind of lame. When it's just digital stuff, why should I be afraid of it? It's not real life, but you know, I don't know, they... They scare me. And that should be enough for you. You big meanies. Despite my terrible fear of the aquatic apex that is the shark, I couldn't just ignore the pristine beauty of the underwater sanctum of Vasture. Water zones tend to leave most gamers drained, and while combat in Vasture leaves something to be desired, its design choices are clearly A plus material. Vasture has a variety of different ecosystems spiraling together with a large array of colors and sometimes surprisingly realistic blends of creatures that all come together to really create one of the most perfect design water areas possibly in video game history, complete with its own East Australian style current. Filled with giant seahorses? Dope! Vasture also features ancient ruins of old highborn that are now Naga, their cities covered in seaweed and locked away from the rest of the world. No specific area in Vasture is my favorite though to be honest, it's more about individual things that I catch instead of certain subzones. Gigantic seaweed forests, schools of jellyfish pouring to the water's surface, and massive ancient sea arthropods are just some of the amazing sights you'll catch while exploring this gigantic water zone. It's not hard to see why I love Vasture, and despite it receiving a bad rap for some kind of stressful combat mechanics, it's still a marvelous zone that shouldn't be missed by anyone, including those of you like me with a terrible phobia of the denizens of the deep. My number 7 spot goes to Eversong Woods. Much like Howling Fjord, I originally expected Eversong to score exceptionally higher on this list than it actually ended up doing, but sadly that's just how the bones fall sometimes. 
Once home to the High Elves and then later the Blood Elves, Eversong Woods is much like the races known for inhabiting it. A very magical, beautiful place. One of the first things I notice and admire when I arrive here is the very interesting design choice for its trees. And honestly, earlier when I said Blizz could be more creative with the cartoony graphics, well, this is kind of what I meant. The tree roots become giant spirals while magical sprites whip around them. The colors are beautiful mixtures of autumn tones of yellows and browns blended together with pretty green grass to make the zone look, well, honestly, like it should have been a canvas in a museum or something. The Blood Elf architecture also helps to lend to the design of the zone, with slick, giant astral towers and the very beautiful Silver Moon City blending in perfectly. My favorite spot would definitely have to be going down and sitting at the beaches of Azure Breeze Coast and just staring out into the sun watching it set on the ocean. The Wooded Eversong is an amazing entry area for new Blood Elves and a beautiful and magical little world for us to explore. Definitely worth making a new Blood Elf character every time just to visit this wonderful location. Coming in at number 6 is Ashara. No, not that Ashara. Not that one either? That Ashara. That's right, for number 6 I had to take a jump back in time, before the Cataclysm, to the original Ashara. Cloaked in Eternal Autumn, Ashara never really received much questing love back in Vanilla, with the exception of some minor stuff like a few world bosses. But in my opinion, this helped to strengthen its fanbase as it made it a pinnacle spot for resting relaxing, and just overall immersing yourself in the details. Beautiful leaves pour slowly from the trees as the autumn grass sways. Ancient highborn ruins frozen in time, while wild animals roaming in the giant slopes all compile together to create this very wild, but overall impressive design choice. I used to spend hours farming the blue dragonkin here for the whelpling pet, and it was one of the most relaxing grinds I've ever had. Like, it's borderline impossible for me to do this grind because I'm so at peace. It's sad that the new Ashara is only a fragment or husk of the original, because back in the day, this is where you went if you wanted a beautiful WoW zone. And I will always remember and love it as such. At our number 5 spot is Crystal Song Forest. Crystal Song Forest is a very, very tragic zone, both in story and in game functionality. Crystal Song was once a beautiful autumn forest until Blue Dragon artifact wielding Highborn came and changed it forever. Wielding their magics against the enraged Blue Dragons, the Highborn permanently changed most of the forest into this arcane frozen, well, Wonderland, and it stays this way still to this date. Half of Crystal Song is covered in the notable arcane frost for which it gets its name, trees bursting but still frozen in time, and the ground covered in arcane crystals, while the other half remains in its original autumn colors and form. Sadly, not many quests take you through Crystal Song Forest, as Dalaran is located in the sky above it, and out of fear of massive lag issues from the major city, Blizzard left the zone scarce for much to do. While it may not have much to do via in-game content, it's still a sight to see. Beautiful colors ranging from deep purples to autumn oranges, and an array of creatures such as different types of treants and ghosts of the ancient highborn that died here. The music is also charming in its own way, easily matching the frozen theme of the zone. If I had to pick one favorite spot here, it would probably be near the unfrozen great tree close to Ice Crown. I love sitting by the tree and just staring out into the forest. It... 
puts me oh, to sleep. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Crystal Song may not have ever been the most populated zone, at least if you aren't counting Dalaran, but it sure is one of the most beautiful, and that is good enough for me. Coming in at number 4 is Nagrand. Now we're talking, Nagrand is just, well, I freaking love it. Like I'm certain Salvador Dali designed parts of the zone, if not all of it. Yes, I know, he's dead, but come on, let's be real here. It literally feels like something I'd yank out of my dreams. I mean like the obvious floating islands, the huge beautiful terrain with the giant monster-like wildlife. Nagrand really isn't afraid to be charming in multiple ways. Speaking of wildlife, Nagrand has no shortage of awesome looking creatures roaming its surface. From the gigantic cleft hoofs moping around, to the herds of Talbuck grazing. It's very, very beautiful. It really helps Nagrand feel a lot more natural, while obviously still feeling very magical. You know, the floating dirt in the sky. Of course, I can't forget those islands. I generally spend most of my time in the Grand on top of them, plopping my butt down and admiring the landscape. Oh, and of course that vibrant twisting nether, Jesus, that's awesome. If I had to pick a favorite in a Grand spot and I couldn't pick my island spots, I'd definitely go with the Throne of the Elements. It's just such a pretty spiritual location. The elementals gathering under the giant waterfalls, it's just a really beautiful eye-opener to the wonders that Nagrand offers. Nagrand is one of those zones that has aged extremely well considering it was part of Blizzard's first expansion for WoW. And it's living proof that even some of the older content is still just as pristine as ever. Plus, I freaking love the color green, and Nagrand has no shortage of that. Like, it's... it's everywhere. Mmm, green. Hey, we've reached our top three, and at number three is Jade Forest. I won't lie, I have an insane love for Asian culture. In fact, it's pretty much right up there with Scandinavian culture. Asian themes, architecture, music, everything really. I just can't get enough of it. I know, weeb alert, right? Eh, but man oh man, do I love what Blizzard did with the Mist of Pandaria zones. I can't think of a single negative about No, no, no. At least I'm above him. I can't possibly fall. Oh, God! Pandaria is full of tranquility, and at its pinnacle sits Jade Forest. A beautiful mix of lush bamboo forests, giant island-like peaks, beautiful Chinese-inspired music, and vibrant colors. Jade Forest is a marvel to what Blizzard developers can do if they put their minds to it. One thing I especially love is the amount of detail found here. Lots of shine and new effects were added in Mist of Pandaria, and they show them off here flawlessly. In fact, one specific spot while I was filming, I saw these like little dragonflies and lily pads in a pond, and they all had unique animations and were like flying around and moving. But the weird thing was, they weren't NPCs, you couldn't target them. They were just something a developer chose to stick into the environment as a detail. Meaning that among all this beautiful stuff, they just kind of slipped in these little cute dragonflies. They didn't have to, it wasn't a necessary detail. They just chose to, and it's, it's a really wonderful thing to do. It really makes the zone shine even more. 
If I had to personally pick a favorite spot from this zone, or maybe like a must-visit one, I'd definitely have to say it would be the Serenity Falls. Glistening, beautiful waterfalls flowing into a very charming little pond is something we all need to see at one point or another. No lie, Pandaria isn't the most universally loved expansion, but honestly, it doesn't need to be. It sets out to give us a beautiful, nearly untouched world to explore covered in nature and unique treasures to find. The developer team sought to make something beautiful, and very much were influenced by our real-life Chinese cultures, and Jade Forest is easily the most beautiful fruit to come from that labor. Shiraz is taking our number two spot, and honestly, it kind of came out of nowhere. I just started playing WoW again recently, and I missed all the WAD and Legion content that everyone else had got to experience, so I didn't know a lot about it. And honestly, I wasn't expecting anything from the new content to beat out a lot of the more nostalgic zones from older WoW. I was wrong. Enter Valshara, what I've dubbed the New Age Moonblade because of all its naturey druid stuff. The home of the Stormrage Brothers has no shortage in the beauty department, even with all the corruption and legion stuff going on. It's still a very pretty and delicate zone. From its massive trees, cute little animals playing, and extremely vibrant atmosphere, Valshara has it all, including an interesting mix of colors, from beautiful foliage greens and autumn browns, to some stellar music. I love the music in this zone, it starts so simple and then gets so intense. I've always loved druid-like locations, and I feel like Valshara embodies everything previous locations like Moonglade and Hyjal had brought to the table, but with an even newer coat of paint. Oh, and I haven't even talked about the most important part yet. Freaking green unicorns. I mean, <laughs> dream runners are awesome. They're, they're cool, they're majestic, they're beautiful. Oh my god, I'm freaking out about unicorns. <laughs> Holy crap. My favorite spot to visit in Valshara would have to be Thostala. It just feels like the most scenic spot. Giant still treants, beautiful willow-like trees, and sparkling water. It's perfect. Valshara, much like most druid nature-themed areas, brings a spectacular mix of Mother Earth meets magic and wonder. No matter the conflict or corruption it's undergoing, it will always be one of WoW's most beautiful zones, and I look forward to the next time I get to visit it. Hey, we're almost to number one, but let's take a look at some honorable mentions first. They are not top 10 beautiful, but they are still extremely beautiful zones that I've fallen in love with. Let's take a look.
right, it's time. Our number one spot is... Shadow Moon Valley. Okay, okay. Not that Shadow Moon Valley. This one. That's right, our number one spot and most beautiful WoW zone is the Warlords of Draenor version of Shadow Moon Valley. Wow, when doing my research on current WoW, I was super surprised to see how many people hated Warlords of Draenor. I don't know, something about cutting like 50% of the content or something, I, I don't really know. I'll, I'll get into that in another video, but man, the design team did a fantastic job with the expansion. Awesomely reimagining the Burning Crusade locations we all know and love, but in their original non-busted prime. But wow, imagine my surprise when I first stepped into Shadow Moon. I understand that I played during BC and I was used to Shadow Moon being this kind of explodey, primal farming mess. I wasn't expecting anything fun or pretty, and that's exactly what the new version is. A beautiful tapestry cloaked in, well, I guess you'd say eternal twilight? With beautiful blue starry skies and an amazing amount of area to explore. The colors of Shadowmoon Valley, much like Zangermarsh, are very relaxing. Mixtures of blues and purples provide a very lulling experience while at the same time encouraging us to explore into this very alien terrain. Giant elec grays, the spirits roam the grassy knolls. That's something I really love about Shadow Moon, is it's so spiritual. Maybe not all the spirits are here by choice, but it still provides a very interesting, if not haunting, look at the zone. Naturally, instead of picking a favorite spot to encourage you to visit, I'd encourage you just to visit the whole zone, especially with the whole Warlords of Draenor stigma. It generally means most people avoid Draenor like the plague. Definitely come experience this place, especially if you're a horde, as you aren't lucky enough to have this zone as a questing hub. And to the Alliance players watching this, bravo to you guys and gals. You have a truly marvelous zone you get to quest in, and I am eternally jealous. Wow, thanks for watching. Remember to post what you think are WoW's most beautiful zones in the comments below so I can check them out. If you like the video or are interested in more Blizzard game stuff, why not subscribe? I do all kinds of stuff like Overwatch, World of Warcraft, Diablo, you know, the stuff. Hey, we also have a Facebook and Twitter page, so check those out as well for up-to-date news and video information. Hey, I'm Captain Potato, and I'll see you spuds next time, next video.